Hey guys, this is Quincy Darnell of ChromebookUser.com and today I have with me the Acer AC700 Chromebook. I also have his bigger brother, the Samsung Series 5 Chromebook. Uh, the Acer actually just ships this week. Uh, I actually received mine on Monday the 11th. It actually shipped on the Sunday, so I was pretty happy about that probably one of the first few folks to actually receive it. I've had the Samsung for a couple of weeks now. I haven't actually played with it a lot, but uh, I will be spending a lot of time with both devices in the next few days, the next few weeks. Uh, a little bit about the Acer. Um, it comes with a Intel Atom 570 processor. It's actually a dual core processor, which is nice. Uh, it comes with two gigabytes of DDR RAM. Uh, I actually opened up the uh, panel on the bottom of the device so it appears that the RAM is replaceable. However, I believe Chrome OS only supports two gigabytes so I'm not sure if we'll be able to make use of uh, accessing the RAM. Uh, it comes with a 16 gigabyte solid state drive. Um, it might be replaceable as well. Um, hopefully, uh, once folks start to get the devices and start tink tinkering around, we'll find out if uh, someone will actually attempt to replace the drive. Um, as far as the display, it comes with a 11.6 inch screen. It's not that much uh, smaller than the Samsung. I was kind of thinking I would prefer to have the Samsung because uh, the screen was bigger. But I wouldn't say that the screen is that much bigger. So uh, the nice thing about the Acer is it comes with a uh, resolution of 1366 by 768. Uh, typically in this price range, netbooks come with the smaller 10-inch screens with the 1024 by 600 resolution. So that's pretty nice. I know a lot of people complain about the cost of the Chromebook. Uh, specifically about the 3G uh, Samsung, which is uh, what I have here. But at 350, I think uh, Chromebooks are definitely uh, competitively priced with uh, netbooks that have the same specs. I know people are going to flame me for that, but you know that's just the way that it is. Uh, one thing I'll say about the screen, though, uh, the Acer is definitely very glossy. I don't know if you can see here. Okay, yeah, I'm getting some of the light there. Uh, I definitely, uh, I'm, I'm very skeptical about uh, using this device in direct sunlight. I'll try it out and let you guys know uh, what I find, but uh, I, I even had to uh, reorient the lights here so uh, I could actually shoot this video because the, uh, the screen was so glossy. Uh, the Samsung, on the other hand, has a matted screen, so you don't get as much glare. So I'll definitely try out both devices in bright sunlight and see what happens. Um, the Acer, uh, this is the Wi-Fi only model. Uh, the 3G version of the Acer Chromebook is expected to ship later this summer. So uh, hopefully it will come out sooner or later. Uh, if you happen to have a cell phone or mobile Wi-Fi or, I mean, usually you can find an internet connection somewhere, so uh, it might not be as big a deal to get the 3G unit, but I usually recommend getting the 3G unit because it only costs an extra $70. It's there if you ever want it, but, you know, uh, to each his own, I guess. Uh, the Acer Chromebook comes with two USB ports. It also comes with a full-size HDMI port, which is nice. Uh, I do plan to test it out, see how well it performs, so uh, stay tuned for that. Um, as far as the device, uh, it has a full-size or, or large uh, multi-touch pad. It does not have dedicated mouse buttons, so you definitely have to uh, get used to clicking on the pad if you haven't gotten used to that already. It actually works well. I won't try to demonstrate the multi-touch here, but uh, maybe in another video I'll do that. Um, I think I like the Acer touchpad better than the Samsung. I know people complained about the original CR48 touchpad. I've never used that device. Uh, after playing with these two devices a little bit, I'm a little bit more partial to the Acer uh, touchpad for sure. 
Uh, what else? Uh, the Acer Chromebook is, uh, I guess, an estimated battery life of six hours. Uh, the nice thing about the Acer again is that you can actually remove the battery. You have a couple of latches there and the battery comes out very easily. So uh, maybe Acer will release uh, extended battery or if you want you can actually you know just purchase a spare battery and if you own the device for a couple years and the battery cocks out you can just get another one. So that's a nice thing about having the Acer as opposed to the Samsung. Uh, which doesn't have any user replaceable uh, components. Uh, you can definitely open up the case if you're willing to. Uh, I've seen teardowns online. We've actually reported a couple on ChromebookUser.com. Uh, not exactly user replaceable, but um, you know maybe you can actually re replace the battery yourself in the Samsung. You know, look forward to seeing someone try anyway. Um, let me show you the Acer up close. Uh, you see a full-size keyboard, a uh, full-size shift key on the right side. Uh, one of my complaints on the netbooks when they first came out was that this shift key would always be tiny. And I had a hard time uh, touch typing uh, with those keyboards because one, the keyboards were small and they would always have this uh, tiny right shift key. That's not the case with this keyboard, thankfully, and I feel like I can definitely use this as a real work laptop. Uh, I find the keys to be, you know, pretty responsive. Uh, I think the keyboard is a nice size, and uh, I definitely, you know, don't have any problems using it. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, on Chromebooks, the uh, caps locks key has actually been replaced with a search key. I actually haven't run into problems with doing, uh, having this set up yet. Um, we'll see after I use this in the long term if that's going to be a, a bother or not. I know that there's a way to actually switch this back to a caps lock key, so I'll probably just play around and see uh, if I'm going to change it or not. Alright, let's take a quick look at the side of the device. You see a HDMI port, a USB port. Uh, I believe that's a microphone jack and a headphones jack. And you also see here the SD card slot. Spinning to the other side, you have another USB port. This device only has two USB ports. Uh, you see the uh, power jack, and I believe that's a Kensington lock. So you can use a laptop uh, lock cable to secure your Chromebook whenever you need to leave it somewhere. Uh, show you the uh, bottom of the device again. Uh, these two latches here make removing the battery pretty easy. easy. Just uh, I guess you just flip this uh, battery lock switch and then you, you move the other switch and the battery comes right out. To see the inside of the Chromebook you just remove these three screws and uh, you just lift here and the uh, bottom uh, 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 whatever co cover comes off pretty easily. Uh, I won't do it right now, but uh, I did in another video actually show what it looks like inside of the Acer. And it definitely looks like the uh, RAM chip is user replaceable, and you might have a couple other user replaceable uh, uh, components inside. Um, that's about it. Uh, just like I said before, I plan to do an in-depth review of both devices over the next couple days and uh, hope to do some speed tests, some browser tests. Uh, maybe we'll try to get Microsoft Office running on these devices, who knows. But uh, I guess that's it for now. Uh, I hope you found this video useful and I hope to uh, see you guys again. Uh, once again, my name is Quincy Darnell of ChromebookUser.com and thanks.